Hey guys, I'm Melissa Morrow, and today I wanted to share how I made this adorable little suitcase. So I was challenged by the Turquoise Iris in her Creative Connection group to make something for myself this weekend. And many of you know that I do a lot of projects for the store, I do a lot of projects for staging, but I don't get around to doing much for myself. So I really didn't know what I was gonna do. And then I realized I had this blue suitcase sitting in my office that we had thrifted, I'm gonna say probably four months ago. And it's just been sitting in my office ever since. I bought it for myself for $5.99, thinking it would really love it in my bathroom to put all my makeup in and all the products that just sit on the bathroom counter. So the first step to get this ready to paint and turn into the beautiful suitcase that I ended with is to clean it up. Uh, I just used some vinegar Windex to uh, just give it all a really good wipe down. Either you can see the $5.99 price tag there. And I made careful attention to go around the metal areas. There is some rust there. So over time it is possible that I will get some bleed through on that rust. And once it's all clean, I'm going with some Bungalow 47 Clawfoot Tub. That is one of my favorites. It's a nice warm white. And uh, just kind of getting in all of the nooks and crannies. I want to give this a total full coat. And um, I actually will need two full coats on here. But I'm trying to work it in really well. And I do cheat in this and use a heat gun to dry it between coats but really you could just let it sit and air dry between coats and that'll be totally fine you know i really wish i could paint this fast in my head sometimes it feels like i'm painting this fast but i would really like it if i could actually paint this quickly notice i'm painting over all the hardware i'm going to paint over the handle i'm going to paint over the samsonite logo i'm painting all of it i'll even lift the top and just paint on the inside ridge just to make sure that it is all well coated when i was base painting this and prepping it i hadn't really decided exactly what i was going to do with it at this point i have so many open tubes of transfers right now because of course we do them on our lives and it seems like our transfers are able to do two three four five projects and we hardly ever use them in full we tend to cut them out and use bits and pieces of them so i figured i would just sort of go through all of the various transfers there were a couple things that stuck out of my brain which is when we were in south carolina which is kind of where I'll say my kids grew up. And in the big house that we had there, one of my favorite things and one of the things that I miss the most is that outside of my home office, I had a um, bottle brush plant. And on that bottle brush, there were hummingbirds that nested there. And I think the hummingbirds actually knew me at some point because they saw me in the window every day. And they weren't really afraid of me through the glass. And even when I was outside doing gardening, sometimes that they would come and buzz around me. So one of the things that I miss the most is actually sitting there in the window and watching the hummingbirds. That's been, I've, I've been wanting to plant bottle brush plants at our current home all the time, but they do make kind of a mess and there's not really a good place for them in my current yard. But it's something I think about all the time. So looking through all the transfers that we've had before i started i did kind of know that there was a new set of transfers that had the hummingbird and i knew that i would so that's the parisian butterflies um, i knew that i would want to use that um that little hummingbird transfer you can kind of see as i'm pulling it out and also i really do like the butterflies i've used the butterflies just a couple pieces here and there i haven't used any of the birds this will be the first time i used any of the birds and so i wasn't quite sure how i was going to go about it and there wasn't really enough that i wanted that to be the focus of the entire piece but again, I did know for sure that there was that little hummingbird was going to go on there. And I love the colors too, that sort of light teal and pink. I, I love feminine things and my bathroom is a very feminine place. I'll say uh, really it's coastal, it's not floral, but it has all the soft blues and greens in it. And fortunately, my husband doesn't seem to mind that I like to have 
really pretty things around me um, in my private spaces. So I wanted to pick some pieces on top that matched, which is why I went through, I don't know, this is like a little finch or something, but he has the same colors as the little hummingbird. So now I, I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna get that hummingbird on there. And also I really wanted my hummingbird to have something, it's, it, it's clearly in a flying pattern. So I wanted it to look like it had something to go into, which is why I chose to do the branch upside down. And you'll see, I'm gonna go later find some flowers that he can look like he's, maybe it's like winter or early springtime when the flowers are just blooming and he's able to start getting the nectar out of the little flowers. But I wanted this to be a downward branch so that he could just flutter kind of like they used to in my bottle brush plants. Now I didn't seal after using the Bungalow 47, which I typically recommend, especially after you've sanded because it can leave a chalky residue. The Bungalow 47 is a chalk and clay based paint and I love working on it, especially for blending, although I didn't do any blending today. It is one of my favorite paints. I really enjoy it. And, um, and so typically I seal before I do the transfers. Today I just felt like after the sanding, my piece didn't feel like it needed it. Um, it didn't feel chalky at all. So I was content not to have to seal at that point, but I definitely will put two coats of seal after I'm completely done. One of the other things I love about transfers is I love words. I love layering words and flowers or other objects. And I just love all the different fonts. I want to kind of have a vintage -y a vintage vibe about it. So I just was regularly cutting apart different little pieces. So here I am going after, um, again, some little, some little flowers. I just want some little tiny flowers to give my little hummingbird. And it's funny because I think the top of the box is really simplistic and underdone and very edited. And the bottom of the box is really full of lots of things. And I think that that's kind of how I am most of the time. It's a, it's a good explanation of myself and my own personality is. I'm very conservative in a lot of ways, but over the top completely in other ways. And I think this box is a good combination of, of all of that. It suits me quite well. I couldn't be happier with the end product. I really, I just wanna like stare at it now. This has definitely been a fun project and I'm really grateful for the challenge. Sunflowers are one of my most favorite flowers in the whole world. And um, even my oldest daughter has one on her back, which I'd be honest, I'm not a big tattoo person, even though I got my first one this week. Um, but the kids have always grown up with sunflowers, uh, knowing that this is my favorite. When my husband was in the Navy and we were stationed in Hawaii, I actually got to be pretty well known for all my sunflowers. It was, uh, let's see, it was probably 1998, 99, somewhere around there. And the sunflower craze hadn't quite taken off yet, at least not in Hawaii. And I basically had an arts and crafts business back then and I would sell in a couple different stores but one store in particular and when I started making all the sunflowers because I'd seen them in a magazine uh, I started making my own sunflowers that they completely redid all of the front windows in sunflowers and crows with my pieces and then I started making them for craft fairs around Hawaii around Oahu and then suddenly I remember being once in a local drugstore and uh, somebody stopped me and was like, aren't you the one who makes all the sunflowers? So I'm going to say that sunflowers were one of the first things that my artistic side ever was known for. And that was a lot of fun kind of getting the recognition. So I guess in that sense, they do hold a special part too, aside from just being a beautiful flower that I do kind of have special memories of that time. And when my kids were little and uh, I used to say that that was the best time in the world because I would sit and do craft fairs in a Hawaii out in the beautiful weather and 
people would throw piles of money at me and tell me how amazing that I was and how creative and gifted I was. And I just can't think of a better way to spend a Saturday is people throwing money at you and telling you that you're amazing. So I really did love those times. And I loved just being, I was a stay-at-home mom and uh, doing the crafts gave me something to do when the kids started, uh, well, when Johnny started school, Paige was still little. And when she would take her naps and in the evenings when they were sleeping or we were all sitting around watching TV, I've never been just a sit around, watch TV kind of girl. So uh, I don't know, I, this is, I think that in the end, this box kind of gave me a lot of memories. It wasn't just creating a pretty object. It was adding little pieces of things that bring me joy and have brought me joy throughout my life. And I think that's been, that's maybe been the best part of this doing something for me. And ultimately, one of the things that I love about crafting is it really has given me so many opportunities for memories. Even when I pull out my Christmas tree, most of the ornaments are handmade. And a lot of them are from Hawaii. And the time that we spent there, every ornament I pick up, I can't tell you what was happening that year. And so the arts and crafts for my family have always sort of been a, a way to hold on to memories of the past. And I love that. So here I have these sunflowers that I love and I'm just trying to figure out how they're going to fit together and maybe they weren't exactly right for this spot but I I really wanted sort of these heads because I tend to draw little sunflowers that are popping over and these were very reminiscent of kind of the ones I draw and I didn't like how they kind of did a Y fork there. So I ended up adding some extra flowers kind of over where they met so that it seemed a little less awkward in that space. But in the end, I really do love the way it turned out. This is probably my least favorite side of the box because I it was maybe a little more forced than some of the areas, but I do really still like it. I, I love the the not full bloomed sunflower pieces. And you'll see, you'll get a close up of the box at the end on this side. Ironically, um, and I think I'm getting ready to do the back here in a minute. Ironically, the back is one of my favorite spots on there. And while I didn't have to do the back, in my bathroom, this hap will actually sit in front of a mirror. And so I will see the back. Or I figured I travel a fair amount, and I probably will take it with me with all my toiletries when I travel. And you never know which way you're holding. And I don't want to have to be thinking when I'm carrying it around, am I showing the right side of it? So I decided to go ahead and do all of the sides except for the bottom. And I'm really glad I did. I think that it is just really fun to have the whole side. And, and no matter how you set it down, no matter how you look at it, there's something pretty to look at. And what I'm doing here is actually going over some of the metal with it. Uh, I used a, just a straight razor to cut the pieces so I could get them on there. But I do like to carry it up and around and I tend to do that on frames and things like that too when I'm when I'm adding transfers if I can create texture by having it go outside of the box if you will literally then that's one of the things that I most like to do it's sort of like wrapping it around the corners I just think that's that's a great thing to do it adds so much character and and really makes it feel less forced And I'm just gonna end up rotating this sunflower over and over again because I was looking at the center of it, kind of trying to determine how the light would hit the center because there is definitely a highlighted area and a shadowed area in the middle of the sunflower. And I really wanted to see how it was gonna look best. And I also wanted it to overlap those leaves and it didn't completely overlap in all of the directions. So it really was a little bit of trial and error on how I was gonna lay it out and make it work exactly how I wanted it to. And then in a moment, I'm gonna add some moths, which were part of the, um, I think the Parisian butterflies pack. 
and they were, they were with all the butterflies. And I love moths. I think moths are amazing. And um, again, it just sort of makes me think of all the little moths that always end up on my front porch. I don't know why moths love my front porch, but I end up with pretty, pretty moths all the time on my front porch. I'm guessing it must be some of the flowers we have around the front door. I think they're just as beautiful as butterflies, to be honest. So as we're getting near the end of the piece, I'm curious what what things give you memories of the past? Is it, you know, is there a transfer that you love? Or is there a flower? Is there an animal, a bug? That really gives you, makes you think about the past and, and how have you incorporated that into your house, into your life, so that when you see it, you you smile at those memories. I think for me, home decor, that's a lot of what it is. And one of the reasons why I love the country style so much, because I could put all these little tchotchkes in, and um, very much an eclectic blend of things that when I come home, I can sit in my house and, and really enjoy, uh, I guess, just surrounding myself with things that remind me of the great life that I have, sort of a touch of gratitude in my house. And I did decide I needed just a little more on the top of the suitcase that it was, it was just a little too edited for me. I just wanted to be able, when that handle flipped in the other direction, I wanted something on top. And so, you know, just a quick little, little add. And I'm glad I didn't keep adding. Sometimes I have a hard time editing myself and I'm glad I didn't keep adding, but, um, it did need that one, just that one little extra bit. So, and there's my box. I'll give you, um, so I'm gonna use some Bungalow 47 matte top coat on this matte finish. And um, it's gonna go all over, it's gonna go two coats, and I'm gonna hit that top ridge again. Everything has already been sanded down. Um, this is just to make sure that those transfers don't get anything under them so that they don't end up peeling off at some point. Uh, this will keep them well protected, especially again, because I probably will be using this to travel. And I don't think that I filmed it, but I did end up hitting up the bottom as well. So I am debating about painting the inside. I don't think I'm going to, I really do like the vintage blue, but I am considering maybe just the front top of that. And so here's a view of all of the different angles. I hope that you have enjoyed this. And um, thanks for spending time with me and sharing my memories with me. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe and uh, watch some of our others. Thanks for joining me.